We've been breeding the bongo for some years, so we we were selecting the animals based on uh, their ability to find their food on their own. They must be healthy. They must be adults or sub-adults so that they can live longer in this uh, sanctuary. And then they are, they must be gen the, the num all of them must be uh, not genetically related to each other in terms of kinship. Project itself, we have already put in uh, 110 million shillings on this project, and every year it will have uh, 62 million shillings recurrent expenditure that it will be. And uh, it's for the group itself has decided one of the key things they want to leave the legacy in is the, the conservation of the bongos. Is the animals we saw as we grew them, they were plenty roaming around, and within a short time, they are all almost finished. But our part is to breed and give them to K K KWS for rewilding. So after we d we finish our project of rewilding here, the KWS takes their, their over to take them to Eburu, all the water towers that are available in the country. Because Bongo only survived in the water towers. So whenever you finish the water towers, you know what the water is? Life. Then you are finished. And that's why it's very important to rewild the bongos back and that comes up with the forest and a lot of the work is being done by KFS on the on, on reforestation and also we are playing our part because as you came by you saw we uh, we replanted I think uh, 120 acres for the forest with the indigenous forest. Uh, so we are working as a team this is one of the historical events we are holding here in 1950s there were many bongos mountain bongos in this region they were hunted down and you could see uh, the young lady there, she was part of this inception of this project of bongos. Again, most of them were also in the 60s, were exported to the US, uh, and the numbers were very low. In 2004, again, 18 bongos were again repatriated to Kenya. From 18, now we have 67 of them. In fact, uh, 2019, we had almost 77 bongos here. But because of the weather then, it was heavy rains, and the place was small, uh, a few of them died. That's why we thought and we created an action plan of expanding the sanctuary. So the sanctuary now is going to be 776 acres of land. It is between the game branch and the forest and this is courtesy of uh, Kenya Forest Service and we believe uh, this will be able to make them reproduce. That's why since 19, 2019 till today almost other 30 new uh, babies were born. Yeah? So this is a success story we have seen in 2020 again slowly the game branch opened up to, to different paddocks, uh, larger areas. In this project here, there are three paddocks, so they are going to be opened gradually until when there is, f there is now full rewilding uh, of the animal itself. So they are being monitored. In the initial one, the two we have released today here, they are going to 100 acres of land as a paddock. They are going to be monitored, they are going to be given supplements until they get used to the environment and then 
they would be open to another 400 acres of land and then eventually the entire 776 acres of land. The key endangered species are no longer the big animals. It is the Hirola, it is the Ron antelope, it's the Sable antelope, it's the Bongo antelope. So these are the ones we have ignored for a long time and now we are putting emphasis on them. Despite we have endangered species like the elephants, the lions, uh, rhinos, but again we have seen the numbers are now stable and they are steady.